Alright, the Prusa i3 Mark II clone is built. Prusa has since released the Mark II S as an upgrade to the Mark II, but I'm still committed to making the downgrade version work just as well. It's built, it prints, actually better than I expected, but there are a few things that didn't work as planned or could still use an upgrade. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we built the Dolly Mark II in a bunch of live streams. We as in me plus two and a half thousand people watching live and smartassing in chat. Which was a lot of fun except for that first one where, I don't know, it probably ended up getting suggested to way too many people who hadn't even heard about 3D printing before. And yeah, live chat turned into an absolute chore to keep civil. But again, huge thanks to everyone who was helping out and tried to calm the storm there. Now. This is a print from the Dolly machine, actually one of the first ones after firmware setup and extruder calibration. There is a good bit of Z-wobble, which I was hoping the thin M5 rods and the very elastic hose-based couplings would take up, but it seems like the entire alignment is too far off and the rods themselves are too strongly bent. I knew they weren't perfectly straight from the start, but bending them back or selecting straighter bits would have been trivial, so I'm still going to replace those. For the extruder gear, yes, the calibration was necessary. Now we're at what I think is almost exactly the perfect amount of material, maybe like half a percent of over extrusion, but I'll call it good for now. The MK8 style hopped gears are actually a bit larger than the ones the printed parts are designed for. So either widening the holes for the extruder motor by hand or using a modified STL file is necessary to get the filament to feed into the hot ends Teflon guide properly. I also removed one of the extruder's springs, since just one of these does already have more than enough tension with these 14mm screws. With a 45mm screw it would work too, but just one spring does the job as well. For the hot end I switched to a Teflon lined E3D clone, because that's what I realized I had at hand. I did order a 1.75mm all metal clone for the project but received one that used a wild mix of 3mm and 1.75mm components, so I assembled a complete 1.75mm clone from the parts I had, and the only heat breaks I had at hand were either genuine ones, which are all metal, or Teflon lined clones. In retrospect, that was probably the smarter call anyway, since Dolly ended up printing PLA perfectly. Badly made all metal heat breaks tend to jam here. I did have to tighten the hot end a bit more than expected during the last build stream, but after that it is leak free. As far as components and vitamins go, that is all the non 3D printed parts, I ended up having to use 25mm long screws as well. I thought I could get away with just 20 and 30mm long ones using 30 instead of the 25mm ones, but in one or two spots that just didn't work out. If you're really short on screws, you can take a hacksaw to a 30mm one and cut it down to length, but it's probably a better idea to get the right length from the start. That's hardly a showstopper, but the heated bed I'm using is. I knew it wouldn't be perfectly flat, and the idea was to just have mesh bed leveling using the inductive sensor to correct for that. The problem here is that the bed is so warped, especially around the corners, um, that the nozzle actually starts pressing the bed down before the sensor triggers, even when the sensor is as far down as possible. And you can see that the screws in the corners actually bend the bed out of shape even more. If that was all there was to the bed, I would have simply slapped a 4mm aluminum plate on it and called it a day. But this cheap aluminum PCB I got was also hardwired for 24 volt. I did wire it up correctly for 12 volts, but the resistance it ended up having was still way too high for those 12 volts, which meant it only draws a handful of amps and takes forever to heat up. Actually, it's already got trouble getting just to 60 degrees Celsius, so I simply decided to ignore the bed altogether for now and just go with an unheated platform and blue tape or 3D lac which gets pretty much everything to stick even on an unheated bed. So instead of fixing this one, I'll just upgrade straight to a Mark 42 clone. These aren't super widely available yet, but will be pretty soon, I think. Uh, if you have a standard sized heater PCB and if that works for you, you can just stick with that as well. For mounting the bed to the undercarriage, I used the screw head washer, bed washer, nut space, nut washer, undercarriage washer, nut assembly. 
This clamps the bed to the carriage very securely and since there is mesh leveling on the machine, you don't have to be super precise when adjusting these, but you can still do so by undoing the two bottom nuts. I first wanted to use longer screws that would protrude past the carriage and they would have collided with the frame, so I cut these notches out to make space. But a minute later I went back and slimmed down the carriage instead. So if you're using MDF2, that's the better way to go about it. As an insulator to the MDF I used some corrugated cardboard from a rigid ink spool box. Uh, that was the fluffiest spool box I had and that cardboard works perfectly. Obviously. We're not getting anywhere near the flash point of paper here. But those two notches I cut out from the frame make me want to recut the entire thing. Without them and even with the OSB board just clamped on the bottom here with those two large washers, it was actually a very impressively stiff setup. And I don't think the brace for the power supply back here is needed at all. It felt like it was on par with the real Mark II. But with those two notches cut out, uh, it's a lot floppier. So just don't cut them in, alright? Uh, the electronics of the build were a bit of a mess, and they still are. I managed to grab both a defective Arduino Mega and a defective Rams. The Arduino is one that I had sitting around for a while and I don't think that I ever managed to flash anything onto it. So I replaced that with another one that I knew worked and the RAMs also seem to have some sort of a PCB issue. And it ended up feeding 12 volts into the Arduino serial port, which didn't harm the Arduino because of the way its CMOS outputs work, but it kept it from communicating with the computer host as long as the RAMs was plugged in. So I simply snipped off that pin on the RAMs and we were good to go. The board is only zip tied to the frame right now, which isn't particularly elegant, I'd recommend actually screwing it to the frame instead. For wires, I don't think I actually used any from the 14 part wiring kit, but I did use a bunch of thicker wires for the heated bed and power supply. Where are they? Here, one and a few more right there. I gave all the important wire ends the proper crimp connectors and also crimped a female DuPont connector to the bed thermistor and the uh, inductive sensor right here. I would recommend using crimped connectors wherever you can but you might be able to get away with just clamping the bare twisted wires in the power supply and the ramps and by soldering 0.1 inch female headers to the sensor and thermistor wires, um, but that's definitely more than just a bit sketchy. The power supply does have this cover over the screw clamps that I don't think does all that much from keeping your fingers away from the mains voltage, so definitely at least put some electrical tape over the exposed areas or even print some sort of a snap on cover. There are some of those available on Thingiverse. And some even include the main switch and IC socket mount so you can integrate those much nicer than what I did uh, with just uh, sacrificing a power cord and screwing that in. In general, the strain relief I implemented using thicker nylon filament, in this case Tolman 910, uh, which is just like in the real Mark II, Works well, but it could use a bit more attention to make sure everything stays in place, particularly around here. Maybe hot glue and a few zip ties to fit the theme. The main part of the assembly actually went really well by just following the official instructions for the Mark II, of course, minus the bits on electronics, etc. And the linear motion was actually really good from the start. Um, it's at least as smooth as the original ones. But after a few prints, the x-axis did start squeaking, so maybe lubricate the sheet bearings before you even put them on the rails. So overall, I'm happy so far. Uh, of course, there are still a few things to tweak, but what I care most about here is that the base of the printer is solid, and that is the linear motion for X, Y, and Z, up and down, obviously. Uh, that's super smooth once I fix the wobble. Um, then the hot end seems to be holding up just fine for now. We'll have to see how well it does in the long run. Um, and the electronics, at least, without the load from the heated bed, are working well too now. So what's next with the Dolly Mark II? Upgrades. So I will be kicking out those hose couplers for the Z-Rods and replace them with these aluminum ones. Uh, I'm sure the hose could work too, but it's going to take a bit more fiddling than what I want to get into right now. I'll try to straighten the Z-Rods or at least try to find some straighter ones. Then, of course, the bed is going and it'll get the Mark 42 
and also there's still no LCD on here yet. So as soon as the new heated bed is on there, uh, I'll migrate the printer over to the custom Prusa firmware and configure the machine for that. Now here's a question for you out there. How much of that do you want to see? And where? I've made a second channel, Tom's 3D Live, for stuff that might not have the same sort of quality as a live 3D printer build, a Q&A, etc. I'm not quite sure if I should just stream everything here and then upload the recordings to Tom's 3D Live or whether I should just stream there and keep the recordings there. Uh, no idea. Let me know what you think, but I don't feel like I should have the ultra casual stuff on this exact channel. Anyways, if you've enjoyed the cheapo i3 Mark II build so far, uh, click that thumbs up, get subscribed if you aren't already, and don't forget to enable notifications by clicking that bell. If you're planning on building a cheapo i3 II, uh, head over to toms3d.org slash dolly to find all the links to the parts I've used, or if you want to directly support what I'm doing here, head over to Patreon and chip in a dollar or two per month. That is much appreciated and you'll be invited to join a monthly Q&A hangout as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.